name is Marilyn Dumont. Thank you very much for um, inviting me uh, to this very esteemed panel. Um, I, I guess, I mean, we have changed, we have come a long way, actually, um, just in the fact that um, today, uh, you know, Shauna is saying welcome to the territory of the people that lived here. Uh, that doesn't happen in Alberta. Rarely does it happen in Alberta. So it's wonderful that, you know, that it's happening here now. Um, it happens a lot in BC, um, but not so much here. And um, that, just, just the fact that, that people are now hearing that and saying that, I think is, is really critical. Um, because what it does is it, say, it does say that the Indian people or Aboriginal people are not invisible. Yes, they did live here. Yes, we do live here. And yes, we have a history, and it's a long history. So that uh, kind of um, uh, acknowledgement of the people the land that we're on, I think, is really, really important. I want to talk about my personal experience with publishing. Um, but first of all, um, when I was at university doing an undergrad in English at the University of Alberta, I finished that degree in 1991. Um, over like 10 years or whatever, but um, because I was working at the same time. But I remember when I was doing English courses, I always wanted to write about Aboriginal writers, reading people like um, Lee Maracle, uh, Jeanette Armstrong, uh, Joy Harjo, Leslie Martin Silco, um, Scott Momaday, people from the US. And I only had one professor that was even mildly interested in the subject at the U of A, and that was in 1991. And I remember writing um, the poem, um, The Devil's Language, during that time because I was so fed up with the English language just going on and on and on about itself. And, um, and then, in, in 2000, uh, after I published, I think, a couple of books, I was invited back to the very same English department to be the writer in residence. And when they phoned me, I thought they had made a mistake. <laughs> Obviously, they've made a mistake. Um, and immediately my mind went to oh, it's some kind of political, you know, uh, tensions in the department. And probably half the department hates me, and the other half, you know, will tolerate me, kind of thing. So I was really um, apprehensive about going to the University of Alberta and being the writer in residence, because I thought well, I'm going, I'm walking into the middle of this kind of minefield, I'm sure fighting amongst faculty about whether I was a writer or not. And um, anyways, I was welcomed there to the, to the U of A, but that was quite a surprise, because I mean, really, I've got nine years between 91 and 2000 when I was invited back. So that was kind of an interesting experience for me. Um, only this year, 2008, the Alberta Foundation for the Arts has um, a, a Aboriginal arts liaison person. And that kind of is astounding in itself. Um, there was never anyone in that position before. Um, I just want to talk a bit about identity and representation because I think for young um, or emerging Aboriginal writers, it can be a bit of a confusing thing. It was for me at first. Um, when I got my first um, publishing contract for my first book, A Really Good Brown Girl, I was just so overjoyed that somebody was going to publish me, and I didn't really think about um, identity or representation of myself. And I started to feel very uncomfortable when I was being introduced um, as almost this kind of reincarnation of Gabrielle Dumont, who was going to come riding in <coughs> like a buffalo kind of thing. And, um, and I realized, you know, very early on, of course, that's the, that was the hook that uh, my publisher had in terms of marketing my work, which was fine, um, except that I wish that I would have had, I'd been, I'd, that I'd been more cognizant about what was going to go on in terms of representing me as a writer. And, um, and so I guess that's the issue that, that writers have to deal with is that how are you going to be marketed? And if you don't, if you don't define and market yourself, somebody else will, and very likely that will be the publisher. So now I'm a lot more careful in terms of how I am represented uh, and how my writing is represented. 
because uh, for a while I did feel like, oh my God, uh, maybe my work isn't that, maybe it's not of merit, and perhaps they've just got me um, going around to these festivals because I'm the, you know, I'm the token Aboriginal writer for that particular press. Um, so that whole issue about representation and identity, I think, is something that has to be negotiated by the emerging Aboriginal writer themselves. And because um, that was something, as I say, I wasn't really, um, I wasn't really cognizant of when I first got published. Um, so I think we, we have indeed come a long way, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And it's very interesting what Armand said about the, um, the Giller. I didn't realize that myself, that That's what I heard. you can only be um, considered for the Giller if you're with a, with a major publisher, because if you've got, uh, what was it, 5,000 titles? Yeah, print run. Oh, print run, okay, yeah. So um, that was kind of interesting, how it really um, marginalized and it excludes um, many writers. Um, I wanted to also talk about my first book, A Really Good Brown Girl. Is now it's, it's now it's in its 12th printing. Um, it was pr first published in 97 by Brick Books, who is a um, non-native publisher, but um, it was actually just kind of uh, what, coincidence that I ended up even going with Brick. Um, but I'm glad that I did because they did have done tremendous uh, marketing my, uh, my book, and marketing it in uh, Aboriginal Lit courses, uh, prim primarily in, uh, in, in Ontario. But <clears throat> they were able to get my book onto um, reading lists for about 22, 23 post-secondary institutions. So um, that, that has, uh, has fed me many meals because I keep getting paid for that, um, some of those poems that are in are really good ground growth. And um, I just got another, they just did another printing uh, about a month ago and I got some more books there. So the issue of going with a, a mainstream publisher was actually um, just happened by accident for me, but it has been really um, profitable. Um, <coughs> I think, actually, I think that's all I want to say. But, um, Can I ask you a question? Have they published another average author since you? Um, no, which is interesting because um, I sent them my second manuscript and they didn't take it. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Anyways, that's enough for me. <laughs>